So previously, we've looked at the period of sine, cos, and tan. I've saved uh, the graphs of sine and tan. Cosine, because it has the same period as 360, pretty much everything I'm going to say for sine uh, works for cosine as well. Um, so I've rubbed off cosine. So if you then apply a transformation to sine, cos, or tan, in some cases, it can affect the period of the function. And that's important to us because we need to know the period of the function in order to find solutions. So, when we're solving trigonometric equations. So, let's think about what type of transformations will affect the period of the function. Now, if I just translate either of these two functions, then all I'm doing is picking up the function and moving it about. Okay? Picking it up moving it to somewhere else. It doesn't change the shape of the function. It doesn't stretch it out in any way. And so the period of the function won't change. So a translation will have no effect upon the function. So translation, no effect. How about a reflection? Well, if I reflect this in the y-axis, or in the x-axis, or this one. The actual what part is repeating itself, okay, will not change. These, this sine curve, if I reflected it in the y-axis or the x-axis, will still have a period of 360, and so, and tan will still have a period of 180. Okay, so a reflection wouldn't make any difference to the period either. How about a stretch? Well, we know that we can stretch in either the y direction or the x direction. Now, if I stretch in the y direction, okay, pulling these up from the x axis, you know, if I stretch it up like that. This curve still repeats every 360. So the period isn't going to change. So a stretch parallel to the y-axis will not do anything. A stretch parallel to the x-axis, however, this is something where we could have change and in all likelihood will. So, if I stretch this function out, what will happen is the bit that's repeating will get stretched out, and so the period will change. So, if I was to draw y equals sine of 2 theta, and if I just looked at the part that's uh, to the right of the y-axis, Okay, then the curve would now, because that's a stretch parallel to the x-axis, factor one-half. So what will happen is the curve will now not go from 0 to 360, but 0 to 180. So this is what sine of 2 theta would look like. So it's still repeating itself, but now it's repeating itself every 180. OK? So the period here has halved. And if I did the same for tan of 2 theta, then the period would also half. I would have a period now of 90 degrees. So if I had y equals tan of 3 theta, if I just look at the part that's to the right of the y-axis, we'd still have a curve that looks something like that. But now, 0 to 360, well, now it'd be 0 to 120, wouldn't it? OK? Because I've got a factor of 1 third stretched in the x direction. So that will be 60 degrees. 
that'll be 30. That will be 90. Okay, so the period of this function is now between 30 and 90, and so 60 degrees. Okay, so whatever your stretch, okay, it's going to change the period of the function, the stretch in the x direction, as long as the, the stretch isn't by factor 1. Okay, obviously that won't change anything, right? So, um, for sine and cosine, if you have, so, for y equals sine, y equals cosine, a stretch parallel to the x-axis, factor k, okay, then you would have a uh, sine of uh, 1 over k theta, okay, so your period will equal 360 k, whatever that factor is, okay, so the fact that this was uh, factor one half means we had a period of 180 degrees. For tan, th sorry, for y equals tan theta, then the new period would be 180 times k. So here we had a stretch parallel to the x-axis factor one third. The new period is 180 times one third which is 60 degrees, okay? So that is how the period can change given a transformation, and it's only going to change when you've got a stretch parallel to the x-axis.